Hi everyone, good evening. It's New Jersey Garden. I'm doing a um, front yard garden tour. Excuse the um, dog barking in the background. That's my neighbor's dog. This is um, a day lily and I think it's, um, I'm forgetting the name of it, but it, it's a very yellow um, day lily and it, I think it's Stella Dora. Dora? I have another one that um, is a more yellow um, tone and it, it blooms a little more often um, and longer than this one does but this one is like a yellowish um, a yellowish orange hue and I had them all in the front initially and I divided them last year and they're doing really well over here this is um, an iris that I planted um, I'm not sure I'm keeping the irises I just kind of stuck these in here um, because I didn't know what to do with them and excuse the um, the lack of mulch. We still need to mulch. And this is a weed barrier that I know it looks awful, but there's a weed barrier that I had put down initially for the garden, um, and I don't recommend it. Um, but it it did help initially with with weeds and to to establish the garden. But I I don't recommend them. Every time you want to plant something new, you do have to cut into it. So. Uh, I just want to apologize. So I just haven't had time to to um, clean this up. Over here, we're converting this back into grass, and then over here is a perennial that's in full bloom. It's called Maltese Cross. It has very bright orange, orange reddish blooms, and it's very tall. It's um, about four f four foot tall. Um, deer resistant as are most of my perennials. This is a yarrow that has not bloomed yet. There's ladies mantle right there. This is the poppy. I actually had um, several varieties of poppies in this garden. There was a white one and a peach one um, that seemed to be coming from the same plant. So um, this is a cat mint. Um, someone commented on one of my videos about the bees on the cat mint. Well, I actually um, love cabin for that reason the bumblebees do not they, they do not bite and there's a lot of bumblebees on this particular plant and i just find that bees are useful um for you know pollination for your garden and i don't get bothered by the bees so this is definitely a plant that does attract some bumblebees um, but again they don't bite and it's um kind of delightful actually to watch them um trying to zoom in to show you some bumblebees but they really love this plant and they they stay on the plant they don't you know buzz around um, and bother you they're just they keep to the plant so uh, what else is here so this is um, Shasta Daisy they're about to bloom in the next few days they're the Alaska variety they're a taller variety there's some more ladies mantle in full bloom this is lavender that's starting to bloom. This here is something that got eaten by something called a four-lined plant bug. Um, the damage happens every spring. The bug um, only lasts about a month. You can see the holes on the plant or the attempted um, holes on the plant. This happened to my lavender and my um, a few of my plants. The, a little bit of the daisies and this is uh, blanket flower and it, it it does like the blanket flower as well, but it's a four line plant bug and um, So we'll hope that It's gone now This is calamint. It's in the mint family. It actually has yellow. Uh, I mean sorry white white blooms It's going to bloom soon Here is one of the poppies. It's Princess Victoria Louise. It has really pretty salmon colored petals that are very fragile. They only last a couple days. It's such a pretty color. Next year I'm going to move um, I'm going to move some of my poppies together so that they're all in the same area but this is such a pretty poppy variety. It's very tall. It's about three and a half feet tall here. This is another little lady's mantle. This is a perennial called soapwort that just finished blooming and it looks like I had a little um, four, four line plant bug damage on that as well. This was a very prolific bloomer. It bloomed for about a month in the spring. 
little pink flowers were covered covered the whole plant. Here's a red poppy. These are all oriental poppies. This one's just bright red. I had some that were pale, uh, pale or peach, and a white one. These are all the Shasta daisies. They will be in bloom in the next few days. This is a great flower for this region. It's called blanket flower. Um, I have two different varieties in here. Um, some of the some of the varieties have more um, more red than yellow, and this one has a lot of yellow in it. Um, but there's two varieties. I'll show you the other variety. But as you can see, the plant bug the plant bug uh, did some some damage there. But it will it will it won't be noticeable in another month. There's another iris. There's a little catmint transplant. More of the Shasta daisies. I have a lot of them. Another calamint. This is really uh, one of my favorite um, trees. This is a crepe myrtle and they they will grow in this region. Um, the ones that are down south are amazing. Th this variety, I'm sorry I don't know which um, variety it is, but it is it is hardy to this zone and it's been doing well. It's been growing every year slowly. I bought this as a small plant in a three gallon pot like four years ago and it produces, it, it's the last thing to bloom out in the spring in terms of the leaves. They just, it looks bare until the very end of April and then the, the flowers come out in August. There's another yarrow. This is a um, lilac shrub. I believe this is a, um, um, what is this one? It may be a black-eyed Susan that I had planted at the end of last season. It's either that or a um, echinacea plant. I'm not sure which what, what's going to happen here. Planted this at the end of last season. There's a lot of um, blanket flower seedlings. There's some blanket flower that's about to bloom. coming over to the front. This is annual alyssum. It gets really big, um, or it spreads, I should say, like uh, it becomes like very wide and spreads out onto the um, surrounding area. If you have alyssum in an uh, annual alyssum in this zone, it will, it will, um, it's nice because it will just appear the next year. It's not a real um, perennial, but it will drop seeds and it will um, show up the next next spring. Here's another of the Maltese cross. It just hasn't bloomed yet. There's a big catnip plant. This is all blanket flower that's about to bloom. More yarrow, a big um, a sunflower seedling. And then in the background it's an interesting plant. It um, has a couple different names. It's Leatris or Gay Feather. It's a purple spiky plant. And it has been spreading. These little spikes in the ground are from, are from, from that plant. I have some daylilies in here along with some yarrow. This is the end of the soapwort over here by the mailbox. I had a lot of soapwort blooming and this is the end of it. There's a daylily. I have two different types of daylilies. I will try to look up which varieties I have. And there's some more blanket flower. I have a clematis over here. I don't know the variety. It needs a little help with, um, I need to stake it a little better. There's a lavender that's going to bloom soon. I have the mouse ear coreopsis along with, uh, it's flanked by um, a couple blanket flower. There's more yarrow. I have three different varieties of yarrow. I'll show that when it's in bloom. There's another daylily. And then here are the peonies. They're nearing the end of the bloom. I think I had five different varieties in here.
Some, some of the peonies were fragrant and some were not. They're very healthy this year. This is a seedling. Um, this is actually uh, a Shasta daisy seedling. This is, these are seedlings that are new this year. It's from Jupiter's Beard, which I'll show you in a minute. It's around the corner. Here's another cat mint. This is a Russian sage, a small variety, and there's a, actually a little cat mint seedling in front of it. But I'm excited to see this Russian sage. I may move it. It's a little bit shaded. It's not looking that like it's doing that great, but I may move it to a different area. Now here is, here's a bunch of seedlings. This is Jupiter's beard. It's in full bloom right now. It really took off. It's the third year. Started out with some seeds that I grew under lights in the winter in the basement. And it's a great plant. It's really drought tolerant and deer resistant. Comes in a white variety as well. This is like a pinkish reddish tone. Jupiter's beard. This is a flower I had. I actually keep trying to get rid of it. It's a tall type of Coreopsis and it kind of spreads like a weed, so I've actually been trying to remove it. It's very pretty, but it um, spreads its seed everywhere. So in my opinion, it's like a weed, so I'll have to remove that. But the Jupiter's beard is really stunning. There's another sunflower seedling. The tree that I'm walking by is, is an old um, dogwood tree. I didn't, I, we didn't plant it, it was just here when my husband bought the house. So now I'm walking back behind the peonies. You can see that they get so heavy, they flop. But they have very large flowers and they're very pretty. So now I'm just walking through the back um, behind the behind the front to show you. It looks like we had a lot of damage from that four line plant bug on this particular plant. I um, I wasn't sure exactly what kind of um, bug it was and I actually contacted the Rutgers Extension Program, uh, Master Gardener Program, and they actually identified it for me. So that was helpful. Um, you know, they recommended pesticides to kill it, um, but I just don't want to use pesticides. I'm just really not into the chemicals, so I just let it I let it damage the plant and just it always comes back and you won't even see that damage in another month with all the growth that will continue on the plants. So The plant in the back, um, this white one is I did a video on that one too. That's near the end of the bloom. Um, that one's called Snow in Summer. It's a really striking perennial. So as you can see, I have a lot of Shasta daisies that are going to bloom and a lot of this blanket flower, which is really drought tolerant. And a lot of the spring blooming flowers have already bloomed. And so I'll just have a lot of daisies and, and the lavender and the blanket flower to look forward to. And that's it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please feel free to leave any comments or questions um, and please subscribe. Thank you for watching.